Medicosis perfectionalis here and we continue our topics on hematology and oncology. In the previous video we have discussed ABO incompatibility, the most common cause of hemolytic disease of the newborn. Today's topic is RH incompatibility, also called hemolytic disease of the newborn and we call it erythroblastosis fetalis and we will know why. Today's problem is when mommy is RH negative and she is married to an RH positive husband. The baby, like father, like son, is RH positive. That doesn't mean if mommy RH negative and daddy RH positive, that the baby has to be RH positive, not necessarily. But in this scenario, RH negative mother, RH positive baby, Normocytic anemia has many mechanisms, including immune hemolytic anemia, furtherly subdivided into all of these, and we are talking about alloimmune hemolytic anemia. We are still here. Hemolytic anemia, again subdivided into hemolytic disease of the newborn and alloimmune hemolysis, ABO incompatibility, and RH incompatibility. This one is more common, this one is more severe talked about the RH system in a previous video, but in brief, if you have the D antigen, you are RH positive. There is difference between ABO system and the RH system. This can have spontaneous agglutinins, which means do not require previous exposure. The RH system does not have spontaneous agglutinins, which means we require previous exposure called sensitization. The second response will be faster and stronger. If daddy is RH negative, mommy is RH negative, the baby has to be RH negative, period, end of issue. But if mommy is RH negative, RH positive daddy, the baby is confused, can be either RH negative or RH positive. The problem happens when mommy is RH negative and the baby is RH positive. RH negative mother, RH positive baby. After the first pregnancy, during labor and delivery. Some RH positive blood from the baby will go to mommy's blood. Mommy becomes sensitized. Before that, mommy was unsensitized. Now mommy is getting sensitized by producing anti-RH positive agglutinins. Okay, since this is the first baby, he gets a pass. He is completely normal. Mommy doesn't have time to respond by producing sufficient antibodies to damage the baby during the first pregnancy, so first newborn is fine. What are other causes of fetal maternal hemorrhage, which means placenta is broken? Mommy's blood and baby's blood are mixed. It's called fetal maternal hemorrhage. Labor and delivery, as you know, is the most common one. Also, RH positive blood being transfused to mommy a huge mistake in medicine. If mommies are H negative, we shouldn't give her RH positive blood, lest sensitization should occur. Ruptured ectopic pregnancy, placental abruption, especially if mommy is hemodynamically unstable, because now it's an emergency C section. Again, blood will be mixed. Termination could be spontaneous or elective. During third trimester, there is a rare condition called absent cytotrophoblast of the placenta. Now, you don't even have a barrier. Okay, here is the story again. First baby is fine. During labor and delivery of the first newborn, placenta is broken. Blood from baby will mix with blood from mommy. Now, mommy is getting sensitized, producing anti-RH IgG agglutinins. RH disease, unlike ABO incompatibility requires sensitization. As you know, RH disease can be prevented. Since this is the first pregnancy, we have time to prevent this from happening in second, third, fourth, and subsequent pregnancies. Here's the story. First, mommy is unsensitized, RH negative mother, and the baby is RH positive, like father, like son. RH positive antigens during labor or during any process that breaks this barrier will pass to mommy. Here we have anti-RH IgG agglutinins being formed. This is called sensitization. During subsequent pregnancies, 
the anti-RHIG agglutinins will pass from mommy into the baby. Now we have a problem called agglutination leading to hemolysis during the second pregnancy, third pregnancy, fourth pregnancy and down the road. First is fine. The incidence, again, first pregnancy, zero. Provided that there is no termination, there is no previous ruptured ectopic pregnancy, there is no previous absence of the trophoblast, there is no previous blood transfusion by RH positive blood, etc. 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 Second pregnancy, higher incidence. Three percent of the pregnancies or of the babies will get hemolytic disease of the newborn. Third pregnancy, even higher, 10%. The incidence increases with subsequent pregnancies. Let's talk about pathogenesis during second pregnancy. First, antibodies from mommy diffuse through the placenta into the baby. Then attachment occur. Here you have the antigen on the red blood cell. They are being attached to the anti-RH antibody. Then what happened? Agglutination. Okay, stucking together and together with other red blood cells and agglutinins. Then lysis, these macrophages produce what? Produce lytic enzymes to destroy these red blood cells. Phagocytosis, the FC receptor of IgG on the splenic macrophages recognizes the FC portion on the agglutinins and now you're in a bad trouble. Hemolysis will occur. Now, this macrophage will consume the entire red blood cell. So there is no spherocytes. We'll discuss this in detail more very soon. Then, unconjugated bilirubin through macrophages can be converted into conjugated bilirubin. Then, extramedullary hematopoiesis will occur because the bone marrow is working like crazy and it's overwhelmed. Other organs, extramedullary, extra bone marrow, will work very hard and now you can have hepatosplenomegaly. The previous video, ABO incompatibility, there was weak attachment of the antigen and antibody macrophage just consumed teeny tiny blebs or teeny tiny edges of the red blood cell. Now your red blood cell is turning into a sphere called spherocytes. On the other hand, RH incompatibility, the macrophage consumes the whole red blood cell. There is a strong attachment and now you don't have spherocytes because there is no cell, like it has already been entirely consumed. Clinically, you can have severe anemia. It can lead to something bad called hydrops fetalis. Fetalis means fetus. Hydro means water. For now, just remember, a fetus full of water, and we will discuss this in the next video. All signs and symptoms of anemia can be there. Jaundice, this is pathological neonatal jaundice, not the physiological neonatal jaundice. Pathological jaundice can occur during the first 24 hours. You can have hepatosplenomegaly and cornectoris. What is cornectoris? This unconjugated bilirubin is lipid soluble. In fact, the whole goal of the process of conjugation is to transform the lipid soluble unconjugated bilirubin into water soluble conjugated bilirubin so that we can excrete this water soluble conjugated bilirubin into the urine. This unconjugated by definition is lipid soluble. This lipid soluble can pass through membranes. If the membrane is lipid, you need something lipid to pass through the lipid. What is the membrane? It's your blood brain barrier. It's a lipid bilayer membrane. Since we are talking about a baby, this blood-brain barrier is immature. Lots of unconjugated bilirubin can pass through the blood-brain barrier into the brain. Then you will have yellow discoloration of the basal ganglia, of the cerebral cortex, of the cerebellum, of the spinal cord. Okay, this can be very bad. But don't forget, please, about the basal ganglia. To diagnose RH incompatibility, erythroblastosis fetalis, clinically, plus some lab investigation. How about the CBC? Okay, hemoglobin will be low, it's anemia, hematocrit low. MCV is usually normal, it's normocytic anemia. If the anemia is severe, reticulocyte count will be very high. And I've told you before, high retic count can raise the MCV 
because reticulocytes are large, immature cells. LDH will be high, unconjugated bilirubin will be high, heptoglobin will be low, cord bilirubin will be between 3 to 5 mg per deciliter if there is anemia, albumin will be low, this is a big deal, because there can be liver damage during this disease, and we'll talk about this more during our video, high drops fatalis, so stay tuned. Now to the Coombs test. Should we use the direct or the indirect? Both of them will be positive. Oh, really? Okay. I know that the direct detects antibodies on the surface of the red blood cell, which makes sense. They are strongly attached in this case. How about indirect? Since this is a severe problem, lots of these IgG agglutinins will pass from mommy to the baby, so they will be in the serum of the fetus and on the red blood cells of the fetus. Both the direct and the indirect Coombs test will be strongly positive. Fine, how about your peripheral smear? Spherocytes? No, the entire red blood cell was consumed by the macrophage because it's a severe condition and the antigen is strongly attached to the antibody to the surface of the red blood cell. You can find nucleated red blood cell. When the bone marrow is working like crazy to produce new red blood cells, you will end up with some losers immature nucleated red blood cells. You have told us that this disease is preventable. Since the first pregnancy is fine, and we should be able to prevent it from occurring in the subsequent pregnancies. Yes, indeed. When mommy is pregnant, at 28 weeks of gestation, we do something called a typical antibody test to test if the mother is sensitized or not. If the mother is already sensitized, there is nothing we can do regarding this drug. This drug is only used if the mother is unsensitized. If the mother is already sensitized, don't give this drug. This amazing drug called Rogam or Rho D immunoglobulin. We give it to mommy between 28 to 30 weeks of pregnancy. And we give it to mommy again during delivery or just after delivery if the baby is RH positive to prevent subsequent pregnancy problems. So mommy gets this twice. First at 28 weeks of gestation and second after labor if the baby is RH positive. Why do we give mommy this rho D immunoglobulin or anti D immunoglobulin. We give her this antibody so she doesn't have to make her own. Okay, we give her anti RH agglutinins. So when her body already has these antibodies, her body doesn't have to make new ones on its own. But also, this Rogam cannot pass the placenta. This is a big deal. If you are giving to mommy the antibodies that can pass the placenta, uh, you didn't help. Like the baby was in trouble because these antibodies can pass the placenta and destroy the baby. If you give mommy antibodies that can pass through the placenta and uh, destroy the baby, you are stupid. These Rogams do not cross the placenta. They just stay in mommy's blood, telling her, you already have the antibody. Mommy is tricked. She, she doesn't have to make her own. It's like taking anabolic steroids by a professional athlete. Okay, these athletes will take anabolic steroids such as testosterone. Now, when you have testosterone coming from outside of your body, your body doesn't have to produce its own testosterone. Also, testosterone coming from outside of your body will shut your pituitary gland, no FSH or LH, your testicles will be very tiny, but your professional trainer at the gym is very proud of you. This is a stupid. Mother is already sensitized. Okay, don't give her Rogam. Okay, makes sense. We repeat the antibody titers and amniocentesis to make sure that the level of antibodies in her blood or in the blood of the fetus are within normal limits. What else do spectrophotometry? We analyze the amniotic fluid for bilirubin. 
if there is an excess amount of bilirubin, this baby is in danger. So what we can do, we can give exchange transfusion to the baby in utero, which is kind of amazing. It's, it's a miracle in medicine. Okay, mommy is pregnant and we are going into the baby during the pregnancy, giving the baby new blood and taking his old blood that contains the RH and the anti-RH antibodies during pregnancy without termination, without delivery. Wow, this is cool. Treat RH incompatibility. If there is anemia, do exchange transfusion. Take from the baby his RH positive blood and give him or her RH negative blood. Repeat this process for several weeks. Then after six or more weeks, you can return to the baby the RH positive blood. Since six or more weeks have passed, the anti-RH agglutinins are already destroyed so no worries why are we doing this to prevent kernectras which can be very bad if there is jaundice we do what phototherapy blue fluorescent light to convert the unconjugated bilirubin into water soluble lumirubin we can excrete this in bile or in urine again this is not conjugation if the hospital doesn't have this nice blue fluorescent light then use natural sunlight. Surprise, surprise, the next video has a mnemonic to remember all of these scenarios, so make sure to subscribe and wait for the next video. Question of the day. Now, I'm the first newborn to this mother, yet I had RH hemolytic of the newborn. How can this be? Let me know in the comment section. Now, why did we call this disease erythroblastosis fatalis? I've just told you, since the bone marrow is overwhelmed, it's working like crazy, and it's producing immature red blood cells, such as your nucleated red blood cells, known as normoblasts. Also, one of the immature parents of the erythrocytes are erythroblasts. That's why we call it erythroblastosis fatalis. So, in the blood, you can have erythroblasts, and you can have nuclear red blood cells called normoblasts. All of these are abnormal, immature red blood cells. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you like this video, give it a like. Follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. I'm posting a lot of fun stuff there. If you'd like to support this channel and get early access to all of these videos before everyone else, please subscribe to Patreon. Thank you so much. I'll see you soon.